Mets conference agreed to take joint action and to unite their efforts towards that end. The Declaration on Economic Progress adopted within this framework stressed the need for mutual cooperation and for the intensification and broadening of cooperation and integration among the developing countries at a sub-regional level. This was the first time that a conference of heads of state or government closely studied the problems of development and underlined the importance of cooperation among non-aligned countries. The Lusaka conference ended by reasserting the principles that the strength of the movement resides in the program of economic cooperation, clearly setting forth development goals, relations between developed and developing countries, the transfer of technology, the establishment of an equitable and lasting international monetary system, foreign trade and much more besides. Major world problems were highlighted, an action which was favorably received, particularly within the United Nations, which one year later, at the request of the non-aligned, organized an extraordinary session in aligned countries whose fundamental task is to coordinate the joint activities of these countries aimed at implementing the decisions and programs adopted by summit conferences, ministerial, the political declaration, an economic declaration and an action program, as well as 12 separate resolutions, documents which made an in-depth analysis of international relations and affirmed the readiness of all participants to play a part in implementing their decision. President Nerere of Tanzania, one of the most respected figures of this movement, and one of the most respected men in the politics of Africa. Uh, and the, uh, that headdress of his has really made, has become a symbol. Uh, <laughs> you, you can see the warmth of yes, the greeting. Yes, the warmth of the greeting. Although he doesn't have a state, not as yet, he is uh, a very powerful figure. leaves as the principles of the Panchashil, President Zia yeah. of Pakistan. Uh, a visitor of obviously very great interest to the host country. Yes. Uh, and a very astute man in the and management tree uh, or any identification of the country being needed. Need the leader of the delegation of Bhutan. I'm sure you, you would agree one of India's most colorful leaders. Yes. And he the King of Nepal. King of Nepal. Nepal with his, his gracious spouse. lady. Would you like to say something about Nepal's well, role? Nepal, you know, in Nepal and India are uh, joined together by forces of geography. A figure that has changed the course of politics in a whole continent of Latin America. Nothing has changed Latin America and its diplomacy as much as the emergence of Fidel Castro. And he has done much also to assist the movement itself. Yeah. Some controversy by some members of the... Look after the affairs of the... Uh, led by Nakwasi, the Secretary General, and Mrs. Gandhi. <laughs> they take their seats. On the last one. There. What uh, what I was saying. I think, I think we are now about to see the start the of the opening of the seventh conference. Yes. Yes. President Castro, Your Majesties, Presidents, Prime Ministers, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests. On behalf of the people and government of India, and on my own behalf, I welcome you to Delhi, a city, <clears throat> a 
a city which in its time has seen much history, witnesses of which are strewn among the dwellings of today. But it is a new experience for us to have such a large and eminent galaxy of spokesmen of sovereign nations representing more than half the world all at the same time. I thank you, Mr. President, most warmly for the kind words which you have said for my country and our people. All of you here... Taking over as the President of the Congress marked Indira Gandhi's entry into the political mainstream. When Jawaharlal Nehru died in May 1964, Lal Bahadur Shastri, who assumed office as Prime Minister, persuaded Indira Gandhi to join his cabinet. January 1966. Following Lal Bahadur Shastri's death, Indira Gandhi was sworn in as the Prime Minister of India. She pledged herself anew to the nation's ideals, to democracy and secularism, to planned economic and social advance, to peace and friendship among nations. Now what was the motive force behind her relentless work spread over 16 years? She dreamed of building a dynamic society and securing a better life for the Indian people. If one attempts to trace the contours of a contribution, the beginning should be with a crusade against hunger and poverty. Poverty is the most degrading experience of human existence, she said. Therefore, the number one priority of planning was removal of poverty. The ongoing programs were streamlined and new intensive schemes were launched to provide employment to the rural population. The minimum needs program was revised and implemented vigorously. During Jawaharlal Nehru's time, under the scientific policy resolution, a broad-based scientific infrastructure had been built. And Indira Gandhi decided to continue the effort with greater vigor. The well-established foreign policy of the nation received great dynamism during Indira Gandhi's time. She was aware that the foreign policy could not be divorced from the country's internal policy. In her effort to strengthen the defense forces of this country, she sought cooperation from whoever was responsive and reasonable. Her policy was neither pro-American nor pro-Russian, but essentially pro-Indian. Ten million refugees were on the eastern frontier of India. The armies of India and Pakistan were confronting each other and there were daily skirmishes. At that time, Mrs. Gandhi decided to go and visit European countries and America to speak to the heads of government to find a political solution. When I got the news in Bonn, like a brink of war. The aspirations of the people of East Bengal for a free Bangladesh were realized through her support. She extended a hand of friendship and cooperation to every country. As chairperson of the non-aligned movement, she infused a sense of urgency into the fight against apartheid and At the United Nations and other global bodies, her crusade always was against the economic domination of the developed over the developing world. Her talks with leaders of other nations always centered around mutual cooperation peace and disarmament. Our goal is general and complete disarmament, a process which must necessarily begin with nuclear disarmament. Despite affirmations of this ob objective from the concerned quarters, the trend at this moment is in the opposite direction, that is, of expanding existing arsenals. Disarmament 
cannot make any progress until this process is re reversed. The first need is to stop the production of nuclear weapons, then to reduce and eventually to eliminate them. Her fight for lofty human causes made her a global personality and a world leader of unique stature. Preservation of the unity and integrity of the country was a sacred mission. She fought boldly against communalism, obscurantism, revivalism, and fundamentalism. Unity and integrity, secularism, and socialism. To the poor and the weak, she was a symbol of hope. To the hungry and deprived, to the chained and oppressed everywhere in the world, she was a symbol of freedom from want and liberation and peace. And the traditional friendly ties and cooperation with the Soviet Union have continued in growing measure with leadership in Moscow standing by India at all times of test and crisis. Prime Minister Mr. Gandhi entering with uh, followed by Mr. Lanfal and uh, takes the position. And there is a standing ovation by everyone in the hall. Uh, not just by the heads of state you could see on the screen, but also by everyone in the bowl of the hall. It was a standing ovation. She invariably draws a standing ovation. Uh, yeah. And uh, now the Prime Minister's... And here again, Indira Gandhi stressed India's ethos of peace for progress. Delhi is the meeting point of the immense diversities of India and a symbol of our ancient values and present aspirations. Free India's decision to remain in the Commonwealth, although it was soon to become an independent republic. Presiding over the Association of Catholic Teachers, 